Tucker recently spoke to former abortion clinic worker Abby Johnson about what really goes on inside the walls of Planned Parenthood. How long did you work at Planned Parenthood? I was there for eight years. And what did you do while you were there? I was the clinic manager, so I took care of just the day-to-day -day operations, hiring and firing personnel, making sure that um, our that our budgets were maintained, including uh, our abortion quota uh, that we had to maintain every month. Um, so that and was excuse much me, my by, job. by that you mean you had to perform a certain number of abortions in that clinic every month? That's right. So every abortion facility within Planned Parenthood has a monthly abortion quota that they must meet. Wh why? Because that's how they make their money. Uh, about 50% of their income is just cash from abortion services. And so in order to keep their clinics open, they have to sell so many abortions. But what about all the mammograms and life-saving work they do? <laughs> Yeah, you know, funny about mammograms, uh, there's not a Planned Parenthood in the country that provides mammogram services. Um, they don't provide prenatal care. They, they don't do a lot of the things that they say that they do. So basically it's an abortion clinic. Pretty much, yeah. They provide a few things, um, STD testing and, and birth control, but they provide birth control because according to their own numbers, 54% of women who have abortions were using birth control at the time that they got pregnant. So they know that that's just a way to get these young girls, especially, I mean, I'm 37 years old. I couldn't remember to take a pill at the same time every day. So, you know, get these young girls in there, uh, put them on a, a, a pill with a, or a method with a high human error rate, and eventually they're going to end up pregnant and that's another way to sell them an abortion so they also sell fetal tissue baby parts and you saw that happen what are the economics right. of that yeah um at the affiliate where i worked we sold we sold the whole body for about 200 dollars per fetus um that went to a company called amphioxus and uh you know, the Houston facility, the, the largest, I, I worked for that affiliate. Uh, it's the largest abortion facility in the Western Hemisphere, second largest to China. And um, we were doing, we had capacity to perform about 75 abortions every day, six days a week. So if you look at even, you know, even half of those uh, women, you know, having tissue that, that is suitable to be donated, uh, donated uh, or sold, then, you know, you're looking at over $2 million a year um, just at that one clinic. But I, I thought that Planned Parenthood or any facility like Planned Parenthood is not allowed to sell human parts. Yeah, it's interesting because the way that they that they line item everything, um, it looks like it's a legitimate business transaction. Um, but if you because the the law says that they can charge for things like shipping and handling and right. uh, you know things like that. And so if they line item it correctly, then it looks like that you're just paying for handling services or for shipping services. Um, but really, there is no additional handling and involved. There is no additional shipping involved. Amphioxus came and picked up the parts from our facility. But if you line item it correctly, then that's how they're skirting around the law. So in your eight years there, did any of your coworkers ever acknowledge how ghoulish and horrible the whole thing is? Just the, the whole enterprise that you were in the middle of? Yeah, I mean, I think though what happens is, and this happened to me as well, I mean, when you're working inside of an industry like that, um, you become very dark and um, you stop seeing just the heinous acts that you're participating in and it becomes a joke. And I remember my supervisor, you know, joking about uh, the babies that we aborted and uh, things, you know, like our, the security code on our alarm uh, was 2229 because that spelled out baby. And they thought that was just hilarious. Um, the freezer and in, in the lab where we pieced together baby parts uh, and we, we would, after we reassembled them, we would put them in this freezer. Uh, 
everybody jokingly called that the nursery. So you, you begin to have this very dark humor. And even though, I mean, you have to at some point recognize what we're doing is, is really heinous and really gruesome, um, you sort of build up this callus. Looking back, how do you, how do you feel about it all that you worked there? Well, I mean, I, I'm certainly sorry that I participated in, in something like that, but I feel like I've really been given an opportunity now to speak out about the experiences I had and, and uh, turn the evil that I participated in into something good. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Well, we're grateful that you came. I mean, this is a subject cloaked by euphemisms, and it's just nice to know what choice really means. Thanks for telling us, Abby. Thank you so much. Great segment, Tucker. And the show isn't over. We're going to be right back.